The river is a very powerful thing. There's something slightly mysterious. You don't really know what lies underneath. So this is a particularly beautiful section. Behind us here we have Simmons Jack Rock, where you can look down and see the beautiful horseshoe of the river meandering around. The peregrines nest just around there and in the evening if I'm swimming in that section you can hear the, the peregrines screeching. The fish jump like little diamonds all, all dotting around. I had a real problem. I didn't paint the rivers probably for the best part of 40 odd years purely and simply because I thought they were too important. I really didn't want to paint them until I felt very confident that I could do it. Or do it in the manner that I wanted, anyway. I wanted something that reflected the reality of this landscape, which was industrial. That industry actually kept so many people alive in this area for many hundreds of years. The history of the ferry goes back centuries to the Roman times and they were used to transport goods, so they were working ferries. It's only in the last probably 50 or 60 years they've become tourist ferries. Ye Old Ferry's Ferry was traditionally the postal ferry, so it would bring posts from the Forest of Dean across into Wales. It was always been a working river. It's hard not to be captivated by the story of the salmon. I spoke to many, many fishermen and women, their eyes invariably sort of mist over when they talk about the lure of the salmon, you know. It was a ritual in many ways in that getting ready to go to the salmon, getting your rods, your lures, your nets, getting down there and setting up for the day and then just waiting for that bite. Photographs of these catches coming out of the river. I mean, I'm five foot two, and the biggest fish from the salmon was as tall as me, and it's as wide as my girth. So it was a big, big fish. When I talk to people about the decline of salmon in the river, why? You know, their response was invariably despair. You know, the glory days have gone. But with it, the rituals and the culture, they've all gone too whole generation, I include myself in that, who no longer bear witness to that uh, huge tradition on the River Wye. We don't see it anymore. The river is my life. I'm the guardian of this river and I'm, I'm letting it down big time. So before, you'd hide under the water crowfoot, holding onto the rocks, and the lovely water crowfoot would go over your head like this, and then the eels would be in it, and the larvae below, a couple of fish might go past, and you'd just be there watching, you know, holding onto the rocks so the current wouldn't take you. And now it's a rarity. I noticed about five, six years ago, it's starting to change. I started to taste it differently in sections. Then I witnessed the clarity and then I started to notice the slime and the gunge on the stones that you would normally see the colour of the stones. And then the beautiful water crowfoot started to struggle. The wildlife has changed excessively. I don't recognise it because this, this is what pollution does. It suffocates the river, it takes the oxygen out, it forms algae blooms and it it makes it lifeless. We are on that cliff's edge where change has got to come now. We're messing this future up for our children.
the next generation, you know, and it pains me, it pains me to the core. Stories don't stop, do they? People will still want to come here. They will create their own stories and they will in time become part of local legend, myth and history. It will just look different. It will look different. And I don't want to think how it will look, actually. I think that distresses me.